Madame la sénatrice, euh, cher Penny, Monsieur le ministre, Senator Monsieur le ministre, Penny. bonjour à toutes et à tous. Merci de votre intérêt pour euh, l'Australie et les relations Thank you very much for to all of you for your presence and your interest in the relationship between France and Australia. I would like to say that together with the Minister for the Armed Forces, we're very pleased to host today the uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for the Armed Forces and uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Australia. It is the first time uh, that our consultations on international security and defense issues are organized at this level, the so-called two plus two format since um, um, an incident I shall not come back to and I would like to say that it is even better to host our counterparts in person. The results are always better than when we talk over um, the internet. So it is great to to be able to see you again, um, uh, dear Penny, and uh, I'm very pleased I had a chance to, to meet with you for the first time, um, uh, Minister. So a warm welcome to both of you. Our purpose today was very much to continue the work undertaken uh, to rebuild an ambitious partnership between our two countries. This work was undertaken over the past few months, and I believe that we all uh, would like it and to be a partnership based on uh, mutual trust and respect and ambition, like I was saying, because such is the mission entrusted to us by the President of the Republic and the Australian Prime Minister after the Met on the 1st of July um, in Paris. This uh, important visit of uh, the Prime Minister of, the, of Australia led to, to um, a joint communique that was published and has uh, served as our compass and course. It recalled, first of all, of our community of values as democratic countries strongly committed to the respect of the rule of law of the international order based on our common charter, that of the United Nations. And that unites us. So today, once again, we were able to acknowledge that our positions were very close on the major international issues, be it the war um, uh, led by Russia and Ukraine or the challenges all around the world, and in particular in the Indo-Pacific region. And beyond this proximity as uh, democratic countries and on the rule of law, the head of state and uh, the Australian Prime Minister entrusted us or asked us to work on a roadmap based on three pillars, defense and security, climate action, education and culture. And I believe I can say that um, we are making good progress in each of these uh, three areas. And today in particular, we agreed that our long history and our many shared interests in the Pacific, a region where we are neighbors, um, should lead us to make the deepening of our cooperation in the region and with the countries of the region, a cross-cutting theme in the entire relationship. France will devote more resources to this. This year, we will multiply by 2.5 the budget of the French Development Agency for projects in the Pacific. It is an effort I meant to announce here today. And for the first time, we will also contribute to infrastructure financing with a Green Harbor project in Papua New Guinea together with Australia. And this is only one example amongst others. Um, I could also mention the coordinated response uh, which both our countries together with New Zealand um, bring uh, together in case of um, natural disasters with the France mechanism which is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. More broadly, regarding climate action, the Australian government has made some ambitious commitments. Uh, we commended these on the occasion of the visit of the Prime Minister on the 1st of July, and I would like to commend them once again here. And in our opinion, these commitments um, very much justify Australia's bid to host a COP. 31 in 2026, so COP21, COP31, that's already a good partnership, and Australia is considering doing it in partnership with um, uh, 
specific island countries and territories. So some 10 years down the road after COP21, we believe it is an outstanding application that we will support when the time comes and we talked about it. From a bilateral point of view, the fight against global warming holds promising prospects. In particular, we are working to strengthen um, relationships between uh, France and Australia's research centers or universities as well as our companies, but also of the Pacific um, uh, countries on energy transition challenges. We also have some uh, great projects in the field of education and culture, as you will see in the uh, joint communique. I will stop here um, on this um, general introduction. I will first uh, leave the floor to my colleague and friend, uh, Sébastien Lecornu, Minister for the Armed Forces. And once again, it gives me great pleasure to host uh, both our Australian Merci colleagues here. Thank you, Madam Minister. Thank you to Catherine for organizing this plus two successfully delighted to welcome our two counterparts in rebuilding this uh, relationship between Canberra and Paris. We've decided with the Minister to multiply meeting um, opportunities to densify um, the dialogue. No taboo uh, subject across the issues with the Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister. It's our third official meeting today, first bilateral organized in Singapore on the fringes of the Shangri-La meeting as soon as I came into office and he, when he came into office. Um, a bilateral with two high points in Brest. A few weeks back, we were able to have discussions on the operational capabilities of the French Navy and an important memorial occasion around our combatants, the Australian soldiers who fell for our freedom. And that uh, sets into perspectives that perhaps the recent um, disagreements by uh, focusing on the major sacrifice of the uh, Australians speaking as Minister for the Memorials, and this plus two, two plus two allows us to um, um, roll out a number of operational decisions. Regarding security and defense matters, four uh, points were discussed uh, specifically. Some find a solution today, but uh, were the subject of a discussion uh, previously at the Brest meeting. The Minister will no doubt confirm the question of uh, aid to Ukraine, where we uh, discussed the last time in Brest, with an important effort undertaken by Australia from the outset as uh, support to Ukraine. And with Richard, we said that it might be useful to offer our Ukrainian partners and friends a joint solution. That's going to be done, notably on the 155 ammunition. We've discussed uh, recently a lot of equipment that can be gifted to Ukraine. In fact, for some time in the media, people don't focus on um, fuel, spare parts, munitions, which is, in fact, the number one request from the Ukrainians on the daily basis. Several thousand 155 millimeter shells will be produced joint with a novel partnership between Australia and France, notably between um, industries for France. Next, uh, well known, that will uh, lead this venture and Australia can bring uh, powder for these uh, shells, and this partnership will allow us over time, over the coming weeks and months, to assist uh, Ukraine. I won't say any more, the minister will return to that. Also, our ability to train jointly in supporting Ukraine, more resilient and more enduring over time, and we're right to put pressure on our defense contractors and doing that with our two countries, our two states, of course, we're prepared uh, uh, for the long haul. Um, exchange of views, secondly, on uh, security in the Pacific region, singularly in the South Pacific, because obviously defense of the French national territory includes Wallis and Futuna, New Caledonia, French Polynesia, I often say, were neighbors in the Pacific which really does gives us a few rights and duties and an ability to assess and interact with Australia, which is 
specific and compels us to a form of uh, strategic closeness with our Australian friends. The Australian Chad is here, be meeting Thierry Burka, the uh, French uh, chief of defence forces, to review the various operations and joint training exercises, uh, very often maritime ops. Uh, the Southern Cross will be held once again in 2023 against illegal and unregulated uh, fishing, not unconnected to the diplomatic efforts on climate protection recalled by the minister, joint commitments in the airs. Pitch Black was held successfully a few weeks ago and which for both our governments is a starting point. In other words, a uh, foundation below which on the operational front we don't want to go. More concrete translation, since it's a bedrock, we're going to task our respective armed forces to build a training agenda operation uh, for the years to come with maybe um, multi-year, not just for 23, 24, but to consider further out, 25, 26, 27, what might be done, it being understood, the priority of both our governments is obviously respect for the sovereignty of each country and state. The Pacific goes, of course, for Australia, goes for France through its overseas territory, also respect for the sovereignty of other island states in the Pacific sovereignty in the air, on land, but above all maritime sovereignty, and it's a major challenge at a time when we're seeing a number of denials of access to maritime uh, routes, and that's a key point. All the more true, the president will return to this as the coming weeks, but the military, French military presence, the South Pacific will be strengthened in the coming years. Our military budget presented by the president on the air base at Mont-Marsan a few days ago with this um, all-time um, budget effort of 413 billion euros is a specific uh, Pacific chapter, strengthened naval capability on the Numea uh, naval base, uh, bolstering our strategic or tactical um, air capability and fighter aircraft. The president will have occasion uh, to set out this roadmap. That's an opportunity for Australia to work on the interoperability between our two armed forces, our ability uh, to train and have joint ops. Third part, I'll accelerate a major training exercise. We know that uh, many uh, Pacific states are spreading needs for training of their own armed forces, not unrelated to climate change, um, civil security missions, ability to protect the local populations. We have offers to make jointly with Australia, making sure that there aren't uh, um, competing training offers and that uh, complementary to one another, the event of natural disaster, the minister recalled the success of the Franz Agreement, but from no mayor, we can perhaps pre-position more forces to project them in order to bring relief to the states in the areas. That's one of the points we discussed extensively. Fourthly, uh, we can't uh, talk about security in the Pacific without um, showing an interest in space, the extent of the distances, uh, very long distances, an ability to have uh, a global view of security in this water continent, of which Australia is, of course, the most important island. Space is, of course, one of the major points of effort for our armed forces. There again, in our military budget, there will be an historic effort in terms of space and military to observe the Earth from space to communicate from space, but also for the first time to secure space from space. Goes without saying there again, our space-based capabilities will have uh, specific functions that we seek to develop in conjunction with Australia, with our industry. Sometimes things um, make sense for um, purchase or leasing. We have French and Australian companies developing solutions. Now, where again, we'd like to work this into Operability, we see it's our generation of decision makers that must take the right decision, otherwise, our countries will be up behind in 10, 15 years. A 
letter of intent has been signed to consider launches. Australia has needs to launch a number of satellites. It's the beginning of a new cooperation venture, starting with the signature of this LOI. I'll have occasion to travel to Noumea in 2020 for the SPEMM, the Defence Minister Summit in the South Pacific, organised by France for the first time on French sovereign soil of Noumea, New Caledonia. We're also doing it thanks to our Australian friends who uh, supported us with the various countries in the area to allow us to host it. The Deputy Prime Minister will be there as a Defence Minister of Australia. We will have uh, further bilateral exchanges between Canberra and Paris via Noumea, and that's one of the historic items to roll out a security agenda across the area. Thank you. Well, thank you. Can I uh, just start by saying how delighted that Penny and I both are uh, of being here in Paris to uh, renew my really good friendship with Sebastian and to meet you today, Catherine. Uh, today we've conducted our meetings on a first name basis um, with a high degree of warmth uh, as we've gone about the important business of the bilateral relationship between Australia and France. And I think the personal warmth between the four of us really characterises uh, in, in a perfect way um, the return of warmth to the bilateral relationship between Australia and France. And that really began last year when Prime Minister Albanese uh, met with President Macron here in Paris, which really began a new era in French-Australian relations, which we are really happy to progress today with our 2 plus 2 meeting. And that could not be coming at a more important time, given the fragility of the global rules-based order, which we see in the Indo-Pacific, but which we obviously also see in Eastern Europe. France is our closest neighbour. Uh, France is a liberal democracy in the Indo-Pacific, which shares a vision of a globe which is governed by a global rules-based order. And in that sense, as our closest neighbour, France uh, is really in the very top tier of relationships that Australia has with any country in the world. And that's been absolutely reaffirmed uh, in the meeting that we have had today. And as we have conducted our conversations today, there has been much discussion about how, as two countries which stand for the global rules-based order, how we can do more to work together in upholding it. That's very much the case in respect of Eastern Europe and in supporting Ukraine uh, in the face of the unprovoked aggression by Russia. And as Sebastian said, we are really pleased to be able to announce today uh, Australia and France working together in providing a supply of 155mm ammunition to Ukraine. This forms part of the on ongoing level of support that both France and Australia is providing Ukraine to make sure that Ukraine is able to stay in this conflict and be able to see it concluded on its own terms. It is a multi-million dollar project uh, and it represents, a, as Sebastian said, a novel cooperation between Australian and French defence industry. Um, and we are really proud today to be able to make that announcement. It speaks of the growing uh, and deepening relationship between our two defence forces, which we've seen with high-level meetings, as Sebastian said, at the uh, chief of defence force level between our two armed forces, uh, at the level of our departments of, of defence. We're seeing a much greater tempo of Australia and France working with each other in exercises in Kuala uh, in Talisman Sabre, um, and in Pitch Black last year, where France participated at an unprecedented level. Um, this speaks to a growing military-to-military -military relationship. And we're also seeing it in terms of the reciprocal access agreement which we seek to pursue, which will see greater access between Australia and France with our respective defence facilities. 
Uh, this is a step that Australia has only taken with but a very few countries. Uh, and to be moving down this path with France speaks to how importantly we regard our relationship with France and our defence relationship with France. Sebastian mentioned the letter of intent that we signed today in terms of cooperation in respect of space. And we see this as a really important field where we can be working together. Um, and it also uh, speaks to a much greater cooperation which we both aspire to in terms of technological cooperation between our two defence forces. And finally, there is no more important place for this cooperation to be given expression than in the Pacific, um, where both France and Australia live. And this is not only in deepening the relationship between our defence forces in the Pacific, but working together in deepening our respective relationships with the defence forces of the Pacific Island countries, countries such as Papua New Guinea, uh, Fiji, Tonga. Uh, and there is much that we can do together in deepening those relationships and, uh, as Sebastian said, uh, working particularly in respect of training um, is a real opportunity for France and Australia to work together to build the capability of the Defence Forces of Pacific Island countries. All of this speaks to a growing uh, level of cooperation between our two countries, not just in respect of defence, but uh, across the board. Uh, and what we've really seen today um, is an ongoing evolution in what really is a new era of cooperation, friendship and warmth between Australia and France. Thank you very much. Uh, can I start by thanking Catherine and Sebastian for your generous hospitality today in this beautiful setting. Uh, and to say how much we appreciate the effort you've made in uh, getting the 2 plus 2 uh, on track uh, today uh, and how much we've appreciated uh, you making uh, so much time available to us. I was very appreciative. Catherine, you, you called me very early on uh, when I first became Foreign Minister and we've met, I think this is the third time, so I appreciate very much uh, uh, the effort you've in invested in this relationship. Uh, France, we are deeply invested to in this relationship. As Richard said, what we see, we have great ambition uh, for this relationship. Uh, France is a global power. It's a member of the P5. Uh, it's a nuclear power. It's a member of the G7. It is key to the European Union and critically, it is an Indo-Pacific power. Uh, and uh, we share values. Uh, I think Sebastian used the phrase strategic closeness. We do. Uh, we share values, we share interests at a time where the world is being reshaped. Uh, so we place a great emphasis on the cooperation uh, with France uh, in the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, we both share an interest in, a desire for, a world that is peaceful, that is stable, that is prosperous and that is respectful of sovereignty. Uh, and the work we are doing together and seek to do together are, is, uh, is directed towards that end, a world that is peaceful, stable and respectful of, of sovereignty. As Catherine said, we are pleased with the work that has been done uh, both by our officials and also the subject of previous discussions be of, between Catherine and I uh, for the bilateral roadmap uh, that the President and the Prime Minister described. Uh, and we look forward uh, to that being finalised uh, in the near future. Uh, it outlines the cooperation uh, that we want to engage in uh, with a focus on the Indo-Pacific. Can I also thank uh, France and Catherine for the indication today uh, of the support for Australia seeking uh, to host the Conference of the Parties uh, number 31. Uh, climate change uh, is, as we all know, an existential issue. Uh, we respect and are grateful for uh, France's leadership uh, in establishing or facilitating uh, the Paris Agreement. Uh, we want to, through uh, this uh, bid to host the Conference of the Parties, we want to uh, work with Pacific Island nations uh, to elevate their voices in the International Forum uh, on climate change, uh, because they bring to that discussion a uh, very acute and existential understanding of what climate change uh, means. Uh, 
Uh, we uh, spoke a great deal about the cooperation over and above uh, climate change in the Pacific. We recognise that uh, the Pacific Island Forum uh, and the, the members of that forum, which includes uh, French territories, is uh, an arena where we want to uh, cooperate very closely and we look forward to continuing to do that. Uh, so I, I want to simply close by, by thanking you again for your generous hospitality and for the frank uh, and warm dialogue today. Thank you, Penny. Si vous avez quelques questions, should you have a few questions for our guests or ourselves, we stand ready to answer them. Question from uh, the Australian, Jacqueline Magnet. From the Australian newspaper. Um, uh, America has just revealed some quite gross deficiencies in their naval ship, shipyards. And my question to the French ministers is, can you trust Australia? And is President Macron's offer to supply interim submarines still on the table, and to Deputy Prime Minister Miles, on the same theme, how are you looking to bridge that ever-widening capacity gap for nuclear-propelled submarines? Sebastian? On the Australian capabilities, I'm sorry that um, I'm not in a position to... Yeah. Um, We're obviously working um, closely with the United States and the United Kingdom to develop uh, a nuclear-powered submarine capability and to develop the optimal pathway uh, to achieve that capability. Uh, and we will be in a position to make our announcements about that soon, which is the, the schedule that was, in fact, established uh, 18 months ago. Um, I, th I think the short answer to your question is that there are no plans uh, for any uh, conventional, conventionally powered interim submarine capability uh, as we move towards uh, gaining the nuclear powered submarine capability which we are working towards. Merci. Nous avons une deuxième question de Rob Harris. The second question from Fairfax uh, Media. Harris from the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, in the past few days, there's been a leaked memo from a US general uh, with the Air Force Minahan um, warning of potential conflict in the Taiwan Strait by 2025, um, given both uh, interests in the Indo-Pacific here. Um, do you take his views seriously? And secondly, considering the uh, increased military aid to the Ukraine from the West, um, how well resourced are both nations, or is the West to, to um, undertake a conflict in, in, in the Indo-Pacific? Sure. If, I, if I may, hello. <laughs> Rob, good to see you. Um, <clears throat> can I start by making this point, and I've made it at the United Nations and also in Washington uh, when I was there, and it's a point about agency and it's a point about guardrails. Uh, and the point about agency is this, you know, we all, uh, have a choice to make about how we deal with uh, escalating strategic competition uh, and the choice that uh, we believe uh, we, we, we should make is to utilise our efforts to elevate our capability in order to promote peace and stability. Uh, uh, and that is the focus of our, uh, our capability uh, piece, that is the focus of our diplomatic piece and that is the focus of, of uh, how we will talk about uh, these sorts of issues. Uh, it's critical for humanity uh, that we do not allow the competition between great powers to escalate into conflict. That's critical because it would be disastrous. Uh, and so what I would say is we should, we ought never uh, assume uh, that we have no agency. We should be, one, arguing for the sorts of guardrails that President Biden has spoken about to ensure that competition does not escalate uh, into conflict. Uh, and we should, in relation to Taiwan, as you know, we should be uh, resolute in our view that there should be no unilateral change to the status quo. 
en, en écho à, à ce que dit Madame la sénatrice, je crois que nous voyons vraiment les choses de la même façon. Il ne saurait y avoir de modification du statut par la force. Donc nous appliquons à ce statut par force. Comme vous le savez, so vigilance, you know how we deal with this matter. With vigilance, firmness, it is important, and at the same time, given that you're talking about China, it is important that we remind China of its specific responsibility as a permanent member of the Security Council. And this is also part of um, our dialogue, which we want to be open, fructuous, but if need be, firm. Thank you. Third question, Virginie Robert, Les Écoles. Um, voulu savoir quel est le montant du, du Good afternoon. I'd like to know what the amount of the contract avoir, is. The next uh, two contracts you said, and then dozens of millions of dollars. You seem to have contracts in uh, uh, the space uh, industry, but when it comes to strictly uh, military matters, and we look at uh, the Australian defence, we it seems to us that there is nothing uh, new. And then you will be visiting London, a member of AUKUS. Do you think there could be a door in this alliance for France one way or another at some point? The relationship with uh, the United States and the United Kingdom through AUKUS um, is not an alliance. It's a fundamentally a relationship which is about the sharing of technology. And obviously, uh, the, 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 the heart of it right now um, is the UK and the US working together, obviously, with Australia to enable Australia to have a nuclear-powered uh, submarine capability. Um, you know, w w we work very closely with France, uh, and that has been the tenor of the conversation that we've had today. Um, working closely on building our uh, interoperability, working closely on building, having a much greater uh, sense of operation between our two defence forces, um, working much closely, much more closely in respect of our defence industry and, and in sharing technology. Um, and so you know, we want to see a, a growing and a building of our relationship with France um, in, in a defence context. Uh, and, and that's really been the, the subject of the conversations that we've had today. First question, Ukraine as such, um, we're talking of several thousand um, shells. We won't say any more uh, faithful to the French doctrine of discretion on aid to Ukraine on these strategic functions. You'll appreciate the idea for us is to bring aid that is significant. By definition, we're looking at a class uh, significant, um, okay, thousands, and even more so an effort that is continuous over time. Because what our Ukrainian friends tell us, there's kind of um, uh, sort of one-off uh, aid. Uh, Minister Colonna is just back from um, Ukraine, knows all about that. But the Ukrainian army needs regularity, predictability, and reliability in deliveries made. Uh, uh, the mandate given to our industry by the two governments is to have an offer that is robust and particularly resilient over time through its ability to supply uh, reliability to the Ukrainian army. Second, um, you skate over quickly space as not a military capability. I can appreciate that in France. We haven't sufficiently explained or insisted on our um, space-based uh, military objective, and I'll have occasion to do that under the authority of the president of the coming. If Richard allows me to repeat one point of our conversations that we've had since uh, we assumed office collective, I put the question to my counterpart, Richard, is AUKUS is it a lock or does it block possible um, capability or military cooperation for the future? The answer was no. And Richard can repeat, otherwise we wouldn't be um, here holding this 2 plus 2 uh, before you. What's the track we're trying to go down? Either we uh, have more conventional cooperation on capability, goals, maritime, air, but we see for a raft of reasons that are not due to the Albanese 
um, decisions, but the decisions of the uh, predecessors of our two guests this afternoon, there's obviously a form of rigidity in the programs as they've been triggered. I know this. I've seen this rigidity in programs that the French Armed Forces have. So the path we tried to trace out this afternoon is to say, let's try and do it on a blank sheet of paper, that's to say, on capabilities for which we're seeking to develop for the future. It's easier. And this LOI on space is really a, coming at the right time. We had this idea when we met in Brest uh, a few weeks ago by looking at the respective requirements of our either own satellites and the need for launchers, First Avenue or cooperation, collaborate, or because requirements on certain military functions, uh, capacity to develop or buy jointly a number of uh, satellites for joint capabilities or leasing of image flows or services, satellite services from one government to another. I'm being deliberately vague and generalist. I mean, a uh, mandate has been given to the armed forces and the equivalent of uh, the weapons procurement executive on the Australian side to develop a target in 2020. It's key because the immensity of the Pacific gives this uh, challenge. We see maritime surveillance as uh, 30, 40 years ago. It doesn't make sense for the next 30, 40 years. So space is one of the elements of the solution. Um, what other segment where I'd like us to have an operational dial. Of course, the drones. French Polynesia is big, is like the size of the whole of Europe. New Caledonian, the sole Caledonian uh, territory is as big as Austria. Guyana is as big as Portugal, moving away from the area. So it goes without saying, the very size of our uh, overseas uh, territories presents us with a challenge on the technology uh, front to ensure our security and sovereignty. And that, typically, if we start ensuring this sovereignty and security from Numia for all the territory, uh, uh, territory territorial waters and the EZ, it would, wouldn't make sense not to do it in partnership and interoperability with Australia, our direct neighbor. What's more is that we're there to assist one another in possible crisis scenarios. That's the starting point. It's exacting. It's demanding. It will take time. It'll take time. We have to recognize it's going to take time. But this strategic closeness that we're trying to kickstart must go with operational closeness between the armed forces and possibly technological closeness on uh, future segments. That's the ambition. I'm sure it'll work. Ladies and gentlemen, the ministers will take one more question. AFP, I've, uh, you don't want to give more details, but I'm going to try and insist a bit. I'm trying to understand why, for example, these 155 munitions must be produced jointly. I mean, the, the powder that you mentioned coming from Australia, it's not available in France, or is there, there a resolve to... Um, present um, cooperation uh, within the realm of communication and President Zelensky uh, of swiftness. What's the delivery time frame for this ammo? Thank you. Um, there are, so I'll be vague, um, in, in line with uh, what Sebastian has said, and that's important in terms of um, you know, protecting the operational uh, uh, fidelity of what this will be used for. Um, but there are some unique capabilities that exist in Australia uh, and some synergies that uh, can be achieved by Australia and France working together in relation to the supply of this ammunition. So, so there actually are complementarities between our defence industrial bases which allow this to happen, so it, it makes sense. Um, but it's also true that we wanted to uh, act together um, as, as, as a statement about how importantly Australia and France um, regard the support of Ukraine um, in, the, in, in the current conflict. Um, and both of us have supported Ukraine uh, separately in, in, in other ways, but we wanted to make it really clear uh, that Australia and France do stand together 
um, in support of Ukraine in the face of this Russian aggression. So you know, there, there is genuine complementarity between our defence industrial bases, which allows this particular project to happen. But yeah, we, we unashamedly want to work together, and it's a really important statement that Australia and France is working together in supporting Ukraine. Before I leave the floor to the Minister of the Armed Forces, let me tell you it's not about uh, communication, but it's very much a matter of politics. Yep. Peut-être quelques éléments, perhaps a few uh, points as a follow-up. Firstly, we um, stand by the pressure that we're putting on our armed forces at the time being. Uh, the president referred to a war economy at uh, the uh, Satori trade fair last summer. All countries are faced with this reality to have an armaments industry that must produce faster, uh, controlling its costs and managing its um, stock levels. We're all in the same boat. It's one of the issues that we're addressing as part of our ministerial meetings at NATO. Um, so in the enablers that allow us to give visibility, exert pressure on the armaments industry, of course, what we can do as part of our military budget, but to really massify uh, certain orders. And this uh, aid to Ukraine at two countries, of course, just simply allows us to uh, pull and to build up and to share the, share the, if it's a bit mercantile, share the bill. That capability means we can do it at two by limiting, of course, how can I say this, the budgetary effort and, sorry, and by not um, drawing, not levying, drawing on our armed forces uh, stocks. Therein is the virtuous aspect of what's proposed, the delivery that's going to go straight from the uh, contractor heading for the Ukrainian arm in better timeline. Okay, you're asking about the timeline. Expected first deliveries in this first quarter that we need to respond uh, rapidly and of course uh, we can use the various stock uh, replenishments with the next uh, but if we're announcing it is that we can deliver it rapidly. Merci beaucoup. Merci.